Gentlemen, and thank you again for joining us for this edition of the 2014 Campaign Roundtable Series. I'm politics reporter Rob Rizzuto, and we are here with the five Democratic candidates looking to represent the 1st Hamden Hampshire District in the Massachusetts State Senate. Gentlemen, thank you again for joining us. Thank you. Uh, for the next question, we are going to kick it back over to our journalist panel, and we are going to send this one to the Republicans' chief editorial writer, Ron Chamellis. Ron? Thank you. Uh, are you candidates comfortable uh, with the medical marijuana laws that we have in Massachusetts and how, in the admittedly early stages of medical marijuana and its application in the state, are you comfortable with how these new laws are being implemented? Okay, so we had uh, a ballot question a couple years back. The voters approved um, allowing marijuana to be prescribed for medical reasons, and it, the law also um, licensed a certain amount of dispensaries, um, some of which will likely fall into your district. Um, so what we're liking to know here is where you come down on the issue of medical marijuana and, uh, you know, the way that the law is written. Some folks have had, they, they're fine with medical marijuana, but they take an issue with the law specifically. Uh, so we want to know where folks come down on this. Um, and Chip, we'll, we'll start with you. Yeah, it's, um, as I've been going around the district and talking to people, it's come up a few times. Um, and I can tell you, it, initially when I first heard about it, I, I did have some, some skepticism about it. Uh, but the reality is that medical marijuana has a significant impact on some people's lives. Uh, there are friends of mine who rely on it, honestly, for glaucoma um, and the issues that they're dealing with. And, it, and it's, in their words, it's a lifesaver for them. Um, so, uh, so I do agree that there's a place in our society for medical marijuana. And uh, having watched the process follow through, they seem to be vetting it pretty well. I know there were many people who applied for it, and many did not receive it for uh, multiple of, of reasons, because of their, the way their corporation structure was. They just didn't feel that they were suitable for that. Um, so I do think that uh, the state of Massachusetts, you know, I'll, I'll pat them on the back on this one, I think they've done a decent job in getting this process out, and I think there is a place for it in society. Um, you know, from there, is it going to open up the broader discussion about are we now going to allow recreational marijuana? You know, that's a further discussion that we need to have down the road. Um, but for now, I think that the medical marijuana, the way it's set up, uh, is helping many people in this area. And it's, and it's um, being consumed in several different ways. It doesn't have, have to be smoked. It can be put in, you know, a prescription, um, I don't know if it's a pill or another form, but there's, a, there's other ways of getting into it, so it's, I guess, a little more healthy for, for the consumer. Yeah, it can be ingested, there's exactly. vaporizers, there's lots of different intake methods these mm -hmm. days. Um, Eric, the topic of medical marijuana? Yeah, I support the measure, and I think, uh, you know, anything that we can do to alleviate pain and suffering for chronically ill people under the supervision of a doctor with cooperation from law enforcement in the community is something I would support. So I support the measure. I agree with Chip that, um, you know, so far it looks like it's been going okay. I mean, I think we need to continue the collaboration. We need to make sure that law enforcement, community leaders, uh, physicians are all on the same page with the implementation. But medical marijuana is something I think in appropriate circumstances is something I would support, especially when it can help alleviate uh, the pain and suffering of people with chronic illnesses. Gotcha, thank you. Uh, Tim, medical marijuana. Yeah, thanks, Rob. Uh, I was chair of the Public Health Council in Springfield before I was elected to the City Council. Looked at a lot of different public health issues over time. This one is clear I, in my mind that there are many people, as, as Chip and Eric just referred to, there are many people who need this. It just, it, it, it hasn't been uh, it hasn't been uh, enacted for recreational purposes. It's been enacted to uh, alleviate pain in people's lives and, and pe uh, alleviate pain in people's bodies. Well, so, so I support that. I, I know, I know as, as Chip noticed, there have been some implementation issues, some license given and taken away and that sort of thing, which gives me the feeling that there's good oversight, that they're really watching this, realizing the risk that's involved. There is a public safety risk here. And uh, there's, uh, I did some study on it. There was, I worked with one of the firms that was trying to get a license, met with them a couple times, learned a little bit more about the public safety issues and the requirements of how these are implemented, how difficult it would be to keep track of all the product, et cetera, and what the, what the requirements were. So I'm in favor of, of medical marijuana being available for people who need it, but I do believe government has a very strong role in oversight here. And what I've seen so far, it looks like we're doing that. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Aaron, topic of medical marijuana. So I, I'm always very concerned when uh, government and legislators try to get in between the relationship between a doctor and a patient. And this is no different. Um, I respect the will of the voters. If a physician, a licensed physician, feels that the, there's a use for marijuana to treat pain, then that should be allowable. When you think about the amount of Oxycontin that's prescribed, 
And we can't go uh, a, a day without reading a horrible story about addiction that was predicated by uh, prescribed painkillers. Uh, this, it, it, in my eyes, is, is not different. It has the proper oversight. Most importantly, it has the medical backup. And, and when we talk about medicine, we should leave it to the professionals. Uh, it gets very murky when, uh, when we start trying to legislate uh, what a doctor should or, or, or shouldn't do with a particular uh, prescription one way or another. Uh, as far as the law goes itself, uh, yeah, it, it's a bit of a lesson in uh, governance by referendum. Because when you you know when you read that as it was passed a couple years ago, there were some difficult timelines to abide by, and and there was some restructuring that had to to happen that delayed the process and led to some confusion. Uh, this is why having experience is important, and and understanding how to to properly uh, use the government's role in, in regulation. Uh, it's not always best done uh, by a question, and we already talked about today, the confusion of the casino question, right. the confusion of the medical marijuana question. Uh, it, it's done best through having the experience to do it right. And this is no different. And uh, I think as we move forward, uh, uh, it, it seems that a lot of the kinks have been worked out, and, and I hope that the patients who need medical marijuana have access to it, and, and that the quality of life for them improves. Very good. Uh, Tom, topic of medical marijuana here in the state's law and the implementation. What do you All think? Right. Well, uh, I'd like to thank Ron for the question, and uh, he had a great article about marijuana, marijuana being a, this law being a stepping stone to maybe having recreational use in the state, and he brought up a lot of good issues. And uh, as I've talked to people, uh, you know, I, I have mixed opinions. I mean, there are some folks who really feel that uh, you know we have to regulate marijuana now. In terms of, for medical purposes, I have no problem with that. I, I've had a lot of patients as a private practice social worker with a PhD. I have people come in and they say they've tried the pills, it doesn't work, and uh, they've had to purchase illegal marijuana to get rid of their nausea. So, you know, I don't think people should have to break the law, I don't think, to take care of their pain. The, um, you know, the issue is I've had also people who are prescribed the marijuana, and they said, you know, it, it doesn't get them high, which that is some consolation for me. But they said they can also buy hashish or they can buy whatever they want once they're in a, uh, a facility that sells the information, sells marijuana. And that concerns me. And uh, as Aaron was saying, the, uh, the only one who can put a lid on this are doctors. And so I would work as a state senator to have doctors really look at how this is being prescribed. You know, like, you know, we've had opiates come into our homes and now we're gonna have marijuana prescribed and come into our homes. And I think if it's too easy to get a prescription, we're going to have a lot of young people who are just going to start using marijuana at an early age. Uh, and it's not good for our brain development. Uh, the only tool we have to negotiate healthy relationships is our brain. And so if people are going to be high all the time, we're going to be in trouble. There's no ways to, to check them when they get pulled over by the police to see if they're legally high or, or you know how, what kind of state they're in. And so that creates a lot of problems that we need to iron out um, fairly soon. So there's some reservations about, uh, about medical marijuana and the implementation of the law. Well, uh, it, as far as the next step. Gotcha. Yeah. And um, just, uh, I guess, quick yes and no. Um, for, there's lots of talk that medical, or that uh, marijuana for recreational use, Massachusetts may be um, one of the first states to go forward with this, um, just based on um, some of the different things that have happened here in the past. Do you support the recreational use of marijuana legally? Yes or no? Tom? No, I do not. Aaron? No. Tim? No. Chip? No. No. Eric? OK. Well, thank you very much. That was our speed round. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big question for a yes and no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Well, uh, thank you. Yeah, we have uh, you know varying degrees of concern uh, about the law. And uh, thank you guys for articulating that. We really appreciate it. Um, we are uh, running out of time here today, so what we are going to do is uh, go right into our final question. Um, basically, um, all five of you are aiming to go to serve in the State House, where legislators from the more populous eastern part of the state hold a great deal of power. Um, many of Western Massachusetts long-serving, um, experienced legislators are not going to be serving after this year. Many have already stepped down, <coughs> some are stepping down after this term, such so as the case with the seat you're running for with uh, Senator Gail Kanderis. Um, you know, tell me why you want to go 
to Boston to represent Western Massachusetts um, when basically I don't want to say the deck stacked against us, but it's a, it's a tough fight. You really have to build bridges and uh, it's politics. It's, it's politics as uh, political as it gets. Um, gentlemen, so just on this topic, uh, we will start with Tim first. Thanks, Rob. Uh, why do I want to go to Boston to be our state senator? I've got, uh, I'm a lifelong resident of Western Mass and uh, have worked in all the different aspects of society. I was a public school teacher. I'm currently a college professor. I worked in private sector, grew up in a large small business in town, worked in the private sector at Mass Mutual 27 years. I've been uh, in, in, the, in government the last few years. I've worked in all the different sectors of society and I feel like I've learned how to work with people from every aspect. In the government role, in the city council the last few years, I've taken on unpopular issues of reopening libraries and try, trying to get votes for that and figure out where the money is, fighting against the biomass plant, working to keep tight flex here when they were trying to go to South Carolina, things of that nature. I've shown consistently, I believe, that, that I can work with different uh, different people and I come as we talk about in Boston and places like that where it doesn't work well in Washington that working across the aisle I've demonstrated that I can do that and I think and it comes back to my experience and leadership in these different areas I think in Boston that the state senator we send there needs to be able to do that needs to be able to fight for for Western Mass and take somewhat unpopular causes or be part of a minority and, and make it a majority uh, in, 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 a, in other words, not make a majority out of a minority, but take a minority opinion or place and, and get people to, to fight, to, to fight hard to support these things that, that I bring up in Boston. Really so support around your ideas. And uh, be, be able to build support, build collaboration. I've been, con I'm, I'm, I've been strong at that and I, I would hope to do that and I'm sure I would do that in Boston as our senator. So I, I love Western Mass and I want to be, be there fighting for it. Gotcha. Thank you. Um, and next we will go to Chip. Well, I, I think that experience matters. Real life experience matters. And I, I don't think that all of us bring that to the table. I bring 24 years of experience on a local level in municipal government. Former selectman, former uh, recreation commissioner, current member of the school committee. Um, on the, my, prof my professional life, I've had a, a nice mix of public and private. I was a corrections officer, as I mentioned right at the top mm -hmm. of the show. Um, I worked at the York Street Jail. Uh, from there, I worked in uh, uh, the courthouse in a, as a community corrections officer. Uh, and then most recently, I'm a police officer for the town of Lundell on a part-time basis. That coupled with the fact that I'm also a small business owner. I've been running my own business for the past 11 years. I run a business um, where every single dollar matters. And people who, I guess, get into government, I think lose that focus a bit sometimes. Uh, if we ran our state like some of us run our business, uh, I think we'd m be much better off. Uh, when, I, when I go to work every morning and, and, and provide a service to the people in my, my uh, customer base, I'm working for them. It's a public service that I'm doing. But at the same time, I'm cognizant of the dollars and where the dollars are being spent and how they're being spent. Um, so my public side, my private side, in addition to my elected side on a local level, gives me a very unique experience. I made a, very, a pledge very early on in this campaign, and only two of us did this. Uh, I released my taxes so people could see how transparent I am. I have nothing to hide whatsoever. I also made a pledge to only raise my money within this district. I've been focused on the people in the Pioneer Valley in this district my entire life. I'm 46 years old, I have 24 years experience on a local level, um, I've lived here my entire life. I am passionate about Western Massachusetts. And your question is, is exactly right. How does a legislator from Springfield go to Boston and get anybody to listen to them? Well, I've suggested creating a Western Mass caucus so that all Western Mass uh, legislators, whether you're a Democrat or Republican, you vote as a block. On, on very specific issues. They have to listen to you at that point. I believe a good idea is a good idea regardless of what side of the aisle you come from. I admittedly tell people I'm a moderate Democrat. I believe that you know people come from all walks of life and they come from all parties. And just because we're all Democrats here, there's a, there's a big difference between us. I'm the one that can beat the Republican in this race because of my, my business background and also the fact that I'm moderate and I'm willing to work with anybody I don't look at parties. I look at who the person is and what the idea is, and I'm focused on Western Massachusetts. Always have been, always will be. Chip, thank you very much. You. Um, Eric. Rob, thanks for, Why the, you want to go to <clears throat> thanks for the question. Well, you touched on it, which is, you know, year after year, election after election, we get left behind, and we get left out here in Western Mass. I'm the only candidate that's worked at every 
level of government. I got my start uh, in my school system working to protect teacher jobs as a high school student. We protected 40 teachers from layoff. Uh, I've also had the chance to work right down the hall from the President of the United States serving President Obama. And I think that's valuable experience, an experience I want to bring home. I've chosen to come home and raise my family in the community I've grown up, uh, I grew up in because I learned uh, working in Washington that you know, change doesn't happen from the top down. Change happens from the community up. Change happens neighbor to neighbor. And that's why our campaign has been engaged in talking to people in every street corner, on every block, in every park, in our community, in our district, talking to people about what we need. And what we hear is that the big things that we need to do, bringing opportunity back to Western Massachusetts, reinvesting in our infrastructure, in our schools, in our communities, we can do those things. But none of it is going to happen if we keep doing the same thing we've always done and expect a different result. It's time for a change. I'm prepared to bring in some new energy, some new ideas, high-speed rail, high-tech manufacturing, breaking down the barriers between our employers and our businesses, bringing a sense back to our community that that middle-class opportunity, that if you work hard, you can get ahead. It's breaking down here in Western Mass because our young people are leaving. We need to reverse that trend, and we're only going to do it if we think big, if we make those big investments, those big changes, taking on the heroin uh, uh, addiction epidemic, investing in our senior populations, protecting, uh, reducing the cost of in-home care, investing in our job training programs and our schools. Those are the things I'm focused on, and those are the things I'm prepared to work on. Very good. Eric, thank you. I'm in, down at the other end of the table. Uh, Tom? Why do you want to go to Boston to represent this district? All right. Well, I, you know, I've been in here. I bought a home in 1980, so I've been a, a member of this community for quite a long time. And I came here to go to Springfield College. And the Springfield College philosophy really influenced me quite, a, the humanities philosophy. And it's really about service to other people and then a healthy mind, spirit, and body. And so, I've, you know, I've worked on that. Uh, you know, I'm still in great shape. Uh, I went and got a, a, an MSW and a PhD in social work understanding social policy and uh, and also um, you know in terms of um, our spiritually I'm very active in my church and, and I think that's important I grew up uh, one of seven children <clears throat> and uh, you know our family worked hard to, to move ahead and I had to uh, set a lot of goals for myself but I think that this area Springfield has been the best thing ever happened to me and, and I really am committed to this area and I want to see it do better I could never understand why Springfield didn't take off we're in such a great location. And so this next two years is a really exciting time, and I want to be part of that. I want to help small businesses develop. You know, we have a great opportunity. We're 90 miles from Boston and 90 miles from Albany. And one of the big things that's happening in Albany is this nanotechnology development. It's one of the world centers now, and nanotechnology is based on material science. And we have UMass, which has one of the best material science uh, departments in the whole world. So I think I would make a commitment to Springfield to try to get that kind of technology in here. Uh, you know, we need to get young people working, and I think that that would be a big goal of mine. I see so many people when I go to jail who are, you know, in their 20s, they've never had a job experience. Maybe we could bring back more co-op jobs where people would go to school part-time and, uh, and then work, because we have so many people dropping out. The dropout rate in Springfield is, is, is really high. Um, the other thing is, you know, of course, I, um, I have spent most of my time working with families. And when you work with families and the level I work with, you know, you hear about all the struggles. And so as a state senator, you really need someone you can talk to who will understand your situation, who's been in the community long enough to really know what's going on, and then we'll take those and, and communicate them. You know, as a PhD, I've done a lot of research, and so I promise to research all the areas that, you know, are going to affect this area. Um, you know, we have three schools in our district, Bay Path, Springfield College, and West New England University, and those are great sources. If we can help those schools develop, we can bring more jobs to the area, that's really important. But we have to deal with safety. When we look at all the other things we want to do, if we don't have a baseline, if people feel safe in the community, we're in trouble. And I see family violence as the root of a lot of our problems in our society, and so that's what I would address. Most of my work has been with domestic violence, I think we can do more. I think we can do more in, in, uh, in the jails, and we can do more in the communities, and that'll be my first agenda. Gotcha. Tom, thank you. Thank and Aaron, you. since uh, you didn't get to start one of the questions, we're going to give you the last word here. Oh, thank you, Robin, and, and thank you for hosting and to the Republican CBS for 
uh, for having this opportunity for, for voters to hear about the issues because it's incredibly important uh, to hear directly from the candidates. I, I think your question hit the nail on the head. Uh, we're losing over 40 years of legislative experience in Western Mass. We need someone who has experience in the State House to be able to hit the ground running. And with the six years I spent as Senator Kandaris' as Chief of Staff, I've had an opportunity to build those relationships, to go to the State House and get working on day one. And that's part of it. You know, ha having the experience in the building, that, that's great. But the other part of it is understanding what the region needs and understanding that we're not dissimilar from the Merrimack Valley or southeastern Massachusetts. And when you talk about how do you overcome the numbers disadvantage, which it, it, it's there. There are more senators that represent the city of Boston than the four western counties. But when you have years of experience working with the members down in Fall River, New Bedford, working with the members up in Lawrence, who face a lot of the same issues that we face here in Western Mass, that's how you get change. You don't get change by disparaging the work that people here have done. You get work done by cooperating, by putting your shoulder to the, to the rock and push, because that's what it takes to get the job done here for Western Mass. I'm happy to have done it for six years on Senator Kandaris' behalf. I'm excited to continue my work. Uh, as the next state senator and, and really take advantage of a tremendous amount of opportunity we have here in Western Mass. Gotcha. Thank you very much. And uh, to all five of our candidates here, we really appreciate you coming through and uh, speaking directly to the voters on these issues. It's a very important election year, and uh, thank you all for taking the time, and best of luck on primary day. Great. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank, thank you. you. And uh, to our journalist panel, Henry and Ron, thank you very much for contributing today. We appreciate that as well. Thank you. And uh, to the voters, the watchers, the readers, um, everyone on the other side of the screen here, we really appreciate you taking the time to tune in and hear the candidates articulate their points on a variety of these issues. Um, these five Democrats will be running on primary day, September 9th. And the winner will go on to the general election to take on Republican Deb Bronski. And the winner of that will be the new state senator for the 1st Hamden Hampshire District in the Massachusetts State Senate. And more important than who you vote for is the fact that you go out and vote. Uh, we cannot emphasize this enough. Take 10 minutes on primary day and certainly on general election day and get out and vote. And uh, tune in to Mass Live. The Republican, New England Public Radio, and CBS3 Springfield throughout the rest of the election season for all the politics news that matters. This forum and others like it throughout the election season will be available online at cbs3springfield.com, masslive.com, and full coverage in the Republican newspaper and on New England Public Radio. Thanks for watching.